Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today we're going to be looking at moving averages. Uh, when I say moving averages, that can refer to a simple moving average or an exponential moving average. We'll cover both of those. Uh, they're the most common types that you'll find uh, being used by investors and traders. Uh, and moving averages are used in a lot of the other calculations using other indicators uh, such as the MACD and Bollinger Bands. Um, the first thing you need to know about moving averages is that they uh, they smooth out price. They eliminate noise. Uh, here you can see price activity goes up this far, pulls back this low, and starts to move up here this far, right? Same time period you can see that the moving averages, uh, both the simple and the exponential, are much more uh, calm or less volatile than that. Uh, so that's one of the benefits of moving averages that they, they remove a lot of the noise out of the market. Moving averages can also act as support and resistance zones. Uh, they shouldn't be treated like exact points, but definitely zones, areas where you're going to start to find support and resistance. Uh, there's a couple in particular uh, that almost everybody tracks, and that's the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. Um, those are so followed by everybody else that they almost become like a fulfilling, self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, whenever you know you see price pull back down to the 200-day moving average, so many people are watching it that you actually expect to find support there, and you typically do. So is that because people are expecting it to happen, or because it was going to happen anyway? Who knows? But uh, that's something they also uh, will often do. Okay. Moving averages can also help you determine the uh, trend. Whenever your moving average is pointing up, uh, it's telling you the trend is up. When it's pointing down, it'll tell you the trend is down. Uh, and this is just something you should um, come to notice uh, over time. Uh, if, if you're new to uh, trading or you know any type of uh, technical analysis, just looking at moving averages can help a great deal. Moving averages can also be used to generate buy and sell signals. In some cases, some traders will use that. Uh, what they'll do is they'll, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but that they're using different uh, time periods on their moving averages. They're not using, like in this particular case, I'm showing two separate moving averages. One is the estimated moving average, and the other is the simple moving average, and they're both set at 10 periods. Uh, that would be what they'd use for the signals they would use. One maybe a 50-day, another one a 10-day, or something like that. We'll get into that in a moment. Um, first, let's discuss how a simple moving average works. Uh, right off the bat, let me tell you that there's no, uh, you know, one's not better than the other. They both have positives and they both have negatives. So let's examine that. All right, the simple moving average on this chart is the blue line. Uh, simple moving average is what it sounds like. And in this particular case, it's 10 periods, since we're marked right here. Uh, that 10 indicates that. Uh, so what they've done is they've taken the close uh, of the past 10 periods, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They've taken the closing price of this uh, time period, added it all together, and divided it by 10. And that gives you this blue line right here. 122.98 is that number that you would come up to if you actually added all that up. Uh, those are lagging indicators. They're both lagging indicators, but it, you'll notice that it's lagging uh, more than the exponential moving average, which is this red line. And the reason for that is that the exponential moving average takes the same calculation. However, in the case of a 10 period uh, estimated moving average or EMA, uh, they're applying an 18.18% weighting to the most recent um, price. This price right here has got more weight uh, on it than uh, the other past data. So it's responding uh, quicker to new information, while the uh, simple moving average does not have that benefit. So it's going to simple moving average is going to lag more than the estimated moving average. However, uh, whenever you're dealing with simple moving averages and, and estimated moving averages, you're going to find that the simple moving average, because it's a true average, it's going to act as support and resistance better. Uh, than the estimated moving average, and especially on the longer uh, time frames. So that's something else to uh, you know think about and weigh. You know which one you use will be dependent on what style of trading you're using, and you know how important it is to you to uh, you know uh, s decrease that lag. Um, in the situations you're looking at short-term uh, moving averages, like we are here, where people look at 10-day or 10-period moving averages, that's really short, and they're going to track price pretty well. 
But if we expand out to uh, a 50-day moving average, I'll show you that in a second, you'll see that uh, there's a great deal more lag to it. And if we go out to a 200-day moving average, there's even more because there's just that much more past data that's in the calculation still. So it's just kind of being weighed down by all that past data. Okay, here we are looking at uh, two simple moving averages. This is the 50-day moving average and the 10-day moving average. Uh, you should be able to tell which is which just by noticing how uh, closely the moving average attracts price. In this situation here, you can see that the moving average attracts price relatively well compared to this blue line here, which is obviously the longer uh, time frame here. The 50-day uh, moving average is this blue line, and the red or this black line here is the 10-day uh, moving average. Uh, you can see that the longer the, the time period there, obviously the more lag you're going to have with the particular average. Uh, what you can do though, and a lot of traders will use this method, and they have varying ways of doing it, uh, and they may use a 200-day moving average, a 100-day moving average, etc., etc., um, or even shorter, uh, rather than uh, a 10-day, they may use a 5-day uh, as well. Um, and they may use uh, estimated moving averages as well. I'm right now I'm showing you two simple moving averages. What they will do is they will use them as uh, a signal line. Basically, uh, whenever the shorter term moving average crosses below the longer term, like you have here, you've got the longer term here, and then you've got this shorter term moving average crosses below that. Uh, they'll consider that a sell signal. And that's what that red arrow is indicating, and that's uh, a sell signal. So they will exit the market here. Then they will wait and for the situation to reverse. And when the shorter term uh, crosses above the longer term moving averages, like, like you see there, they would consider that a buy signal to be buyer there. And they would continue to buy or hold until a low point gets taken out. So they'd advance and then pull back and advance and then pull back. And at this point, they'd actually be taken out and they would exit there. At the same time, they were getting a sell signal here as this shorter term moving average crossed below the longer term. However, in using this uh, strategy, you will often get what's called whiplash, where you get a sell signal, and then you turn right around, and you get a, a buy signal, as you'll notice, uh, the short-term moving average cross below the longer term, and then cross back up the other way, so you'd be getting a buy signal again. Uh, so you can see whiplash in this uh, method that people use. And then you can see again here is exit signal, and now we're getting a buy signal again. Uh, this is a five-year chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, in case you're wondering. Um, the concepts here that you need to know is that you'll hear people talk about uh, a, a bearish uh, crossover of the moving averages. This would be this guy. Um, a bullish crossover would be this. Uh, the death cross would be this. Um, the golden cross would be this. So if you hear those terminologies being tossed out, you know what they're talking about. And typically they're referring to the 50-day and the 200-day moving averages. They're so widely tracked by everybody. Uh, so when those two cross, they, you know, people talk about it. Another thing that you're going to see people do is uh, talk about a close above a moving average or a close below a moving average. Uh, some traders will simply use the logic that uh, when a moving average is acting as support, it's bullish, you should be a buyer. Uh, and whenever it's acting as resistance, it's bearish, and you should be a seller. Uh, here you can see that the moving average is acting as a support zone here. You had price activity moving up here, it pulls back down, touches it, jumps up here, dips below a little bit, comes back up here, dips below it again. But every time she's closing above that moving average, she remains in an uptrend, the trend is pointing up, the whole thing you know, is, is proper. And then at some point you get a close below. Uh, that's a negative signal and they would consider that a sell signal. So they would exit and just wait for something to change. And if they start to see uh, resistance forming, where price activity uh, would sell off below the moving average and then advance up to it and then ricochet off of it uh, that's acting as resistance. Uh, here you go like this, back over here towards it, and ricochet away from it. Uh, you'll see that it starts acting as resistance. Um, they'll be using those moves back to that um, moving average as uh, sell opportunities or short opportunities. So they would uh, you know, short the uh, whatever asset class they're looking at uh, at the, those points as long as you remained in the downtrend and they would consider it a downtrend until you had a situation that reversed where you had a close of a period uh, higher than the moving average itself and that happened here so at that point they become buyers uh, they would continue to do that however you are also going to get um, whipsaw or uh, whiplash in the situation you're going to get uh, situations where you're going to get uh, false signals and so here you had a close below 
uh, the moving average, and then turn right around and get a uh, buy signal, then a sell signal, and then a buy signal. Uh, so th these are things that you should uh, take into account. Uh, no method out there is 100% uh, flawless. Everything has uh, to be taken with other indicators. I wouldn't use a simple moving average or an estimated moving average or a, of any time frame as my sole indicator for when to get in and when to get out, but uh, some people do. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice, nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit loss or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.